I will show you the science of actually how the cells work and you will have more knowledge than most doctors in the world today because they still believe in the genes. Every cell in your body has a minus voltage on the inside and positive voltage on the outside. Every cell, every live cell is a battery. Every cell has about 1.4 volts, not too much. 50 trillion cells in the body times 1.4 volts is 700 trillion volts of electricity in your body right now. And with training and meditation, you can focus this energy called chi, and you can use that energy for healing. With, with that much voltage, people can self-combust. Every function in your body is already present in every cell. So where you have an organ in your body, the cell has an organelle, which means miniature organ. So the textbooks talk about the nucleus is equal to the brain. The nucleus is not the brain. The nucleus is the gonad. The nucleus does not control the cell. The nucleus is reproduction of the parts. So if you are dead and you, are, you still have your protein body, what's missing? The signal. So when a signal binds to a protein, what happens to the protein? It moves, it makes behavior. If you are healthy, your behavior is good. But if you have a dis-ease, the behavior is not right. What can cause disease? There's only two things. Either the protein is bad or the signal is bad. People with bad proteins got them from birth defects. Because if you were born with defective genes and the genes make the protein, then the protein is defective. But less than 5% of the population has birth defects. That means 95% of the people should have a healthy, happy existence. But if you were one of the healthy people and now you are sick, what would cause the problem? There are only three ways to mess up the signal. One, trauma. So if I fall off the stage and, and make my, wrench my back, the signal is, is uh, interfered with. Number two, toxins. If the chemistry is not good inside the body, the signal cannot be passed through bad chemicals. Both of these interfere with the propagation of the signal. But the third one is thought, the mind. There is nothing wrong with the body. It's just sending the wrong signal at the wrong time. So if you change your thought and your mind, you can change the biology. And this, the mind, is the primary cause of illness on our planet today. What is the name of the switch that controls your biology? Perception. And why that's important is that it's you and how you see the world that controls the biology. We have been given misinformation. When people say a gene turned on and a gene turned off, it sounds like the genes make decisions. Here is the simple truth. A gene is a blueprint. The gene does no control. The gene is never on or off. The gene is red or not red. And what do you think controls the signal? Perception. You are not the victim of your genes because you control your genes. One gene blueprint using epigenetic control can make 30,000 different proteins from one blueprint. So you can come with good genes and then through epigenetic control, create cancer, diabetes, and it has nothing to do with the genes, but epigenetic control. It returns responsibility for your health to you, and not you are not a victim of your genes. 
Yet every day the media still tells you that genes control this and genes control that. And then people get nervous about what genes are in their family. And as Greg Braden said before, if you look for the disease, you can create the disease through epigenetics. Right now, it appears that about 95% of cancer is not because of mutant genes, but because of epigenetic control. And it can be passed from parent to child like genes. But the difference is you can change your epigenetics at any time. If you change your perception, you change the reading of your genes. If someone tells you you're going to have a disease and you believe that, then you can create the disease. So when you look at yourself, you're not a single entity, but you are a community of 50 trillion cells. But it's important to understand the word community. Every cell is intelligent, but when they're in a community, they give up their personal intelligence and respond to the central voice. In that community, that a cell must follow what the central voice is. And if the central voice says to die, the cells will die. The central voice is the mind. There are signals from the environment, the internal and external environment. The brain, the function of the brain is to perceive the signals and then interpret those signals and then send the information to the cells to control the behavior and the genetics. So the function of the brain is perception and from that creates the mind. Now, we have heard of something called the placebo effect, right? The placebo effect is when you have a very positive thought that something can heal you, even if it's a sugar pill, uh, but you believe it's the real medicine, then you can heal yourself with that. So the pill didn't heal you, it was the thought that healed you. Statistics reveal that one third of all medical healings, including surgery, are the result of the placebo effect. And this is what medicine does not tell you, is that there is negative thinking and it's called the nocebo effect. And in the same power that positive thinking can heal you, negative thinking can kill you. Point is, is that negative thinking can create all the effects of chemotherapy. Now think about this. If a doctor tells you you have a disease, or the doctor tells you you're going to die and you believe the doctor because he's the professional, the belief will give you a disease and can cause you to die. So belief becomes an important part of medicine. Now, many of you have heard about the drug Prozac. Every year, billions of dollars are spent on buying Prozac. And here's a surprise that the Prozac is no better than a sugar pill, so that it is a placebo drug. And yet the people who take it believe in the drug so much, it okay. makes them better. So if you believe that something is good for you, it will be good. And if you believe that it's harmful for you, it will be bad. So the question is, if we are so able to be healthy and young, why do we get sick? And one of the most important reasons is stress. And the function of the stress hormones is to take the energy of the body and get it all to run and fight. So the stress hormones will shut off the functions of things that will not be needed in fight or flight. One of the most uh, uh, important uses of energy in the body is the immune system. Stress hormones shut off the immune system. And the significance is every one of you right now is infected with almost all of the disease germs that humans have. Right now, if I take a blood sample, I will show you you all have viruses and bacteria and parasites. And you might say, well, if I'm infected, then why am I not sick? Because if your immune system is working properly, it will suppress these parasites and germs. But the moment you start to shut off the immune system, 
then these organisms begin to start growing again. So the idea that you catch a disease is not really true. You already have the disease. And the med medical people call these germs and parasites opportunistic organisms. So uh, if, if you are under stress and you, sh and you shut off the immune system, then you give these organisms the opportunity to then make the disease. And yet when we get some of these diseases, we go to the medical doctor and they give us drugs to kill the germs and the bacteria. Well, this is very helpful if the disease is going very quickly. That was not the problem in the first place. The problem was stress that shut off the immune system. So to get, to get healing is, okay, treat the disease, but also treat the stress.